A reading from the second chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 through 5. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the, the, word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John, the twelfth chapter. Then Jesus cried out, Whoever believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And whoever sees me sees him who sent me. I have come as light into the world, so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in darkness. I do not judge anyone who hears my words and does not keep them. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not receive my word has a judge. On the last day, the word that I have spoken will serve as judge. For I have not spoken on my own, but the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment about what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I speak, therefore, I speak just as the Father has told me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God and our Savior Jesus. Amen. Happy New Year! You might go, what? The church New Year is different than the Gregorian calendar. It begins four Sundays prior to Christmas Eve. Happy New Year! The word Advent is the beginning of the new Advent is the beginning of the new year, and the word is derived from the Latin word Adventus, meaning coming, which translates to the Greek word parousia or present. We are waiting for the coming of the Lord, for God to be present in our world again today. A little history on Advent. Scholars believe that during the fourth and fifth centuries in Spain and Gaul, Advent was a season of preparation for baptism of new Christians in the January feast of Epiphany. The Advent wreath first appeared in Germany in 1839. A Lutheran minister working at a mission for children created a wreath out of a wagon wheel. He placed 20 small candles and four large white candles inside the ring, and the red candles were lit on weekdays, and the four white candles were lit on Sundays. Eventually, the Advent wreath was created out of evergreens, symbolizing the everlasting life in the midst of winter and death. The circle reminds us of God's unending love and eternal life. Advent candles are often nestled in the evergreen wreath. Additional decorations like holly and berries are sometimes added with the red color points to Christ's sacrifice and death. And the pine cones can symbolize the new life that Jesus brings through his resurrection. Families, begin lighting a candle on the fourth Sunday before Christmas and light another candle each subsequent Sunday, as we will do here as the family of God. And so the church year involves an annual cycle of seasons, including Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, Easter, Pentecost, and Ordinary Time. 
Each season has its own unique set of prayers, colors, and themes which center on the gospel of Jesus Christ and prepare us for the journey of faith. A quick overview of the seasons of the calendar brings some life to it. Advent marks the beginning of the church year for Christians all over the world. Happy New Year! It begins on the fourth Sunday before Christmas and ends with Christmas Eve. It focuses on preparing the way for the coming of the Messiah and concludes with Jesus' birth. Christmas, it is the 12-day season. We celebrate the mystery of the incarnation, God with us, Emmanuel. Epiphany, it is the season following Christmas in which the church proclaims Jesus to the world as Son of God, Lord and King. Many churches remember the coming of the wise men bringing gifts to the Christ child, whereby they reveal Jesus to the world as Lord and King. This season places a strong emphasis on the human nature of Christ. Epiphany means manifestation, appearance, or vision of God. Lent, we remember Christ's temptation, suffering, and death. It is a 40-day period beginning on Ash Wednesday that concludes the day before Easter. The climax of Lent is Holy Week, immediately preceding, preceding Easter. It is observed in many Christian churches as a time to commemorate and enact the last week of Jesus' life. His suffering and his death through various observances and services of worship include Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and for some, Holy Saturday. Lent is a time of intentional repentance in the light of God's grace. Easter is... 50 days from the Resurrection Sunday to Pentecost Sunday and includes Ascension Day where Jesus goes into heaven after his time of resurrection on the earth and he ascends. We celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit into the li- at Pentecost. We celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit into our lives in the church. The season is used to celebrate the reality that God, through the power of his Holy Spirit, continues to work in and through and among his people. And then we have ordinary time. The final season is commonly referred to. The season's name comes from, not from ordinary, but the word ordinal which means counted time. The time beginning on the first Sunday after Pentecost is used to focus on specific themes or interests, importance to our our local church. As someone who has studied faith formation from birth to, since before birth to death, the church calendar can also be, can also explain the life cycle of a person. Advent. When a child is told to be coming. We do the preparation needed to prepare for this child. And Christmas, the birth of the child, there's great celebration and presents, and what you've been waiting for has come. And as I love to say, God trusted us so much that he sent his son Jesus to be in our own hands as humanity, to care for him, to raise him up. Which leads to epiphany. When a child begins to figure out that they have life within them, that they are their own being. And they begin to ask questions. Why? 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 You know that word. And then comes Lent, the trial and tribulation of the teenage years. Temptation and angst trying to discover how they fit into the world. And then Easter, the born-again experience, where in our young adulthood we claim our identity and we are people of God in Easter, that a person comes to understand their life. And then Pentecost, this is where everything comes together, where you find your plan and your purpose in life. You are filled with that spirit to go out into the world to celebrate this gift of life that God has given you. And then it, it ends with ordinary time. Or, as I've shared this story before with uh, younger students, ordinary, ordinary, ordinary time. Why are old people so mean? I think it's because they don't remember the cycle. That just like the Christ child, know that you were prepared for when you were born into this world. 
And then our job as adults is to do likewise for the generations that follow. In everything we do and say should be giving new life so that we continue this gift that God has given us until that light comes for all eternity. The first reading from Isaiah is a vision from the prophet. Mount Zion shall be raised higher than any other mountain so that its prominence is clear to all, not just Israel. The nations will then begin their pilgrimage to worship Israel's God and be taught his Torah. A scene of judgment will be enacted and the God of Jacob will finally settle the divisions between nations, bringing the end to warfare. God will judge between the nations and arbitrate for many people with the end result being that humanity shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. That is a day I long to see and seek to work toward. How is this done? We heard. Continuing the work of the house of Jacob. Come, let us, you and me, Walk in the light of the Lord. Light, it's an incredible symbol in the Bible. It's how it begins. It's how it ends. And for our first... And we walk in the light of the Lord. Did you hear that? We walk in the light, not in judgment. Even Jesus said that himself. I did not come to condemn the world. We walk in the light. Live out God's plan and purpose involving every nation and people on earth to be restored to the creator. In Isaiah chapter 13 through 27, it's devoted to God's sovereignty over all of the earth, as is chapters 40 through 55. That is why Isaiah is so frequently cited in the New Testament. God's salvation affecting all the nations and all people as it was with the call of Abraham back to the first book of the Bible in Genesis. As he was, we too are called to be a blessing to all the families of the earth, all nations, all people. And so it continues and ends with Jesus, who we hear hear declare in our gospel reading, I have come as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in darkness. I do not judge anyone who hears my words and does not keep them. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. The Father who sent me has given me a commandment about what to say and what to speak, and I know that his commandment is eternal life. These verses provide a poignant conclusion to the story of Jesus' public ministry spoke from Jesus directly to the person reading this text, you and me, hearing it again for the first time. We are faced with this simple alternative to believe in Jesus as the incarnate word of God made flesh or to not believe, but to what end? Jesus does not come to judge, but his presence will evoke judgment because of the response that people make to his word. Will we continue to walk in darkness? with our divisions and the clamoring for power, which leads to war and death. Or, in faith, in seeing the light with our heart, with our eyes, where darkness is not dark to God anymore, for light is as bright as the day. Come, let us walk in that light, living out the plan and purpose of God to all people, For all eternity, let that begin now, not in the end. In doing so, we can announce once and for all, Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Amen. I invite us to stand and join in the words of the Apostles' Creed.